Okay, welcome. This is the Parallel World Podcast, Episode 3, with your host, Shaggy Double N, and with me, a guest. Animagus Queen. And first things first to get out of the way. Yes, the name has changed to Parallel World Podcast instead of Alternate Reality Podcast. And the reason behind that is is because I did some research and Alternate Reality has been taken by somebody or some individuals. And I just wanted to change it just because I don't want to have any like copyright issues or any problems of stealing or taking someone's idea or, you know, avoiding all that. So I just thought I'd change the name to this. So this will be the name going forward, Parallel World Podcast. I actually like this name a little better, honestly. It sounds like it slips right off the tongue. But yeah, just you can consider the first two episodes part of Parallel World. So this is episode three officially. So yeah, get that out of the way. All right, so in today's episode, we are going to cover the Valiant Universe. Don't know if you guys heard of them, but they're a comic universe. They have a whole list and line of comics, uh, tons of characters. They're the third biggest comic universe in the world, next to Mar- uh, Marvel and DC. They have the third biggest catalog of characters, so that's and we're going to get into why we like it and which characters we like and yeah so um i think the first the first individual or book we should talk about is exo manowar yeah and i think he's the flagship character yeah he's like one of the main characters everybody loves and he's one of our favorites but it's not just him as an individual um it's more than that it's all the characters in the storyline and all they have to bring um, onto the table. So it's it's so um, easy to like get wrapped up into something or to get sucked into it because of the uh, like the main character, but Exo Man of War, it's not just about him as an individual. It's everything they put into this book. I'm not going to like do spoilers, but um, he's yeah. just a Visigoth. Yeah, you can do a little bit. Yeah, a little just, bit. Just warn them, say like, Spoiler warning. Yeah, spoiler yeah. alert. Yeah. And but give, um, give them like two seconds to leave. Like, oh, yeah. spoilers got to get out of here. But this is, <laughs> it takes place basically when the Visigoths were at war with the Romans. Um, and basically, let's just say uh, an, a- an alien race comes down and they swoop a lot of people up and basically just enslave them. Um, but yeah, they, yeah, I know, I'm getting there. But um, there's there's two different kinds of um, it's the vine who are the ones that have kind of swooped them up and enslaved them, and the vine um, it gets all you know uh, wrapped up into the vine are obsessed with the Shannara, and the Shannara is like um, let's just say it's an entity. If I said that right, entity. <laughs> um, yeah, entity. Yeah, it has like a, its own personality, but it's it can it can transform itself into anything it wants, but mainly uses itself as a suit and a lot of the vine members they put this suit on and they all die and they're all wondering why they're not worthy and then all of a sudden this visigoth he comes in and you know he's obviously human and they're all confused because this shinara is connected to him and will let him wear it so it all comes down to like there's like good vine and bad vine so there's obviously going to be evil and good but um Kind of to wrap this up, he comes back to Earth, and it's a totally different time period. Um, he doesn't know what's Some going on. Day. Yeah, so he's just kind of, like, confused, and his mind's just everywhere, and he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to use a Shannara. Everything's just going crazy for him. But then that's when they bring a lot of different characters from the Valiant Universe into it with him and make it a huger story than it is. Like, it's not just about... um the vine anymore it's about other enemies and that's just it's, it, it gets you really drawn into it and i love this this book because it's so amazing and there's like more than more than three books so i i think there's like about eight of them no, six like 12. or or 12 so there's but 12, there's 12 volumes of the uh the first series and then there's a new series going on mm-hmm. uh that's basically uh that's you know after um, 30 in the harbinger forest too yep and that's, you know, he leaves the planet and stuff, and yeah, we'll get into that. But we're just starting out with the uh, the 
launch titles. Yeah. Of when the Valiant rebooted themselves. They were rebooted in 2012, and they started off with their main line of characters. Obviously, they started with Exo Man of War. They started out with Bloodshot, and then they started out with... Uh, Ninjak, right? Uh, it was, no, it wasn't Ninjak, it was Harbinger. Uh, Ninja came like a year later. Mm, okay. Um, but Ninjak did appear in Exo Man of War Volume 2. Mm-hmm. So he was already established, his character. He was already established before Arik came into the picture. And mm-hmm. Arik is Exo Manowar. He was, uh, he was already established doing his, you know, missions with MI6. And MI6 is the, you know, company that is in England. That kind of like a spy, kind of, they're like England's FBI, basically. Like, you know, they're CIA, they're detectives. But, you know, he's like special forces ninja, so he goes in and does missions that no one else can. So, he, yeah, he was introduced into Exo Manor. He was called to take Arik out because they saw him as a threat. They yep. didn't know who he was. Which so, was also a good fight, too. Yeah, that was, yeah, it was a good fight. It was called Enter Ninja, which is Volume 2. Um, And, yeah, but um, that's basically a good introduction into that, into the Valley universe, if you're just starting like oh where do i start you know what i mean mm-hmm. That's... i hope i gave it a good wrap up because i get a little bit nervous and i start talking on and on but yeah. if you are interested just go buy an x amount of War book and you'll understand why we love it so much and why it's something to start you off with the valiant you know universe so yeah. and there's a lot more that we have to discuss too of characters or you know groups that we need to talk about so all right yeah and then um yeah there's um yeah, that's like she said. That is a good introduction to get to just start out. So, but um, yeah, another good starting off point is Bloodshot. Um, if you want something a little bit more violent, a little bit more like adult rated, but I mean, Exo Man or Ninja are adult rated as well. This is a very like mature kind of for all ages. He kind of reminds of me of the Punisher a little bit. Yeah, Bloodshot is basically um. He's basically Punisher and Wolverine put together, if, if you think about it. He has the ability to heal from... Uh, nanites. Yeah, the nanites. And, you know, he, he can go on a killing spree like Punisher, basically. But the catch is he's brainwashed by Project Rising Sun. And Project Rising Sun is a big factor into the Valley Universe. They're a big connection to it. They kind of keep some characters connected to each other. Uh, They created Bloodshot as a way to handle their missions, and the Project Bloodshot thing goes way back into, like, World War II times. Mm -hmm. Uh, The first Bloodshot was created in World War II as, like, a prototype to, you know, test out, like, a super soldier program. And the Nanite program. And it got better and they did more models and they did more prototypes as the years went by. There was one in the Vietnam War and then there was one in the Cold War and then there's one in modern day, which is the one we know. You know, like fought in wars like Afghanistan and Iran. And yeah, he's Bloodshot's a good character because he's not just like a killing machine, like I'm a badass kind of like Oh, I'm going to kill everybody, and I'm, you know, I'm going to heal, and blah, 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 you know. He, there's more to his character, and he does have similarities to Wolverine. And it's like, you know, yeah, he lost his memory and stuff like that, and he's trying to remember who he is and stuff like that, and regain his hum- humanity and all that. But him being, what differentiates himself from Wolverine is that he's kind of like a still human as you know like wolverine's a mutant wolverine will never know what it's like to be human but he he was still human he still has a little bit of humanity in him he was just a project gone wrong basically Mm -hmm. and he's just trying to find his way in the world so why do you like bloodshot kind of like how you said he's he's like the punisher and wolverine he's he's got like that badass attitude and i love the fact that they 
they did the whole like he has the nanites that keep him going and you know they they really show it in the comic book i like how like gruesome it is and how um it's not just about him being some killing machine but more of him dealing with always going back to you know project rising and having to deal with his his whole mind getting brainwashed especially when he gets close to a Close to a point where they he's him, about to... They give him false memories. Too. Yeah, like when he's about yeah. to regain actual memories, they just take him and brainwash him again. Yeah, they're all and, fake memories. Yeah, it's, it's more than just some Punisher ripoff. It really has like a deep story behind it. That's why I really like him as a character. So, Yeah, and he... Bloodshot is also a good connection to... Has a lot of connections, actually, to the Harbinger like universe. And... The Harbinger universe is, well, I mean, it's still part of the Valiant universe, but Harbinger is, like, they're a big chunk of the universe. Yep. Harbinger and the beings known as Psyots, they're basically the mutants of Valiant. They're, like, you know, the mutants, like, how Marvel has the mutants. Psyots are, like, Valiant's mutants. Mm Mm-hmm. They're people gifted with powers and abilities, and... You know, there's a school for them, and that school is, you know, kind of like Charles Xavier's school a little bit. And, you know, you can teach all the Psyots how to control their abilities and how to use their abilities. Um, And where Bloodshot comes into that picture is Project Rising Sun is actually kind of at a secret war, you know, with the Harbinger Foundation. Mm -hmm. They don't get along very well. So, Bloodshot, they kind of created Bloodshot as a way to handle the Psyots, to take them out, because they don't believe in Psyots, they're, they believe they're corrupted and not part of humanity. So, that's Bloodshot's ties to Harbinger. And that'll kind of segue or way into, like, Harbinger and the characters in there and the powers that they have. And, yeah, so Harbinger, if you also want to start with that, that's, there's a few volumes of that it's just called harbinger and it's basically about a character called peter stanchek and he's actually very very powerful he's one of the most powerful psyots on the planet next to toyo harada who Mm -hmm. is his teacher like his principal um and i kind of like this like, struggle with Peter Stanchek because he's not just, like, oh, I'm, like, all powerful kid that can do anything. He can he can fly, he's got psychic abilities, he can, like, very powerful telekinetic. He, he has a drug problem. He has a drug addiction problem, and he struggles with his drug addiction and also his, like, amazing amount of powers. So... I've never really seen that before, where a kid is struggling with drug addiction, and, like, the same amount of powers at the same time. I thought that was, like, a cool twist onto how they can handle, like, a struggle like that. Two interesting random problems to have at the same time. So, that's kind of why I like Peter Stanchek's character, because he's struggling with two things at once. Mm -hmm. So, and Toya Harada steps in to teach him more about that, but things go wrong and they disagree with things and you know the Toya Harada becomes the villain of that series and stuff and you know not making spoil too much of it you know see that's why I love that storyline so much is because he turns out to be the villain yeah like he's supposed to be like this this man who's supposed to help him ease into a better path and instead is like is also butting heads with him because he's also like super powerful and He's the villain, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. And their their power set is very very similar too. Like they, they're both like telekinetics, and you know they can fly and, you know, like basically go in people's heads and tell them what to do. You know, they're basically like mind controllers and stuff like that. And yeah, and you actually find out like Toy Harada has been around since like World War Two. Yeah. He appears to be young, but actually the cool thing about what he's doing is the reason he's he's super old, actually. 
he was born in like World War II times, and World War II was in the 1940s, and this is in modern day, so he's at least like 70 years old. Oh, yeah. But he has the appearance of like a 30 year old man. Mm hmm. And the reason how he's doing that is he's actually psychically projecting in people's minds what the, how they see him. Yep. So, you know, he's going inside your head and projecting himself like, oh, no, this is what your brain thinks I look like, which is crazy. You know what I mean? He's able to do that on top of everything else. He can multitask his brain in a multitude of ways, like do that, cloak himself, his appearance, and then also do these other things at the same time. That's insane, and it requires a very powerful mind to do. So he, and if you read it, you'll see why he's a great villain. He, the things that he does. But yeah, and also characters that get introduced that are really cool into the Harbinger world is like characters like Livewire. Faith. Yes. Uh, Livewire is a Toya Harada's student. Later becomes a hero. Uh. And then the Harbinger team actually is Peter Stanchek, Faith, Chris, Flamingo, and then, um, who was the other one? Tor. That was that, right? Yeah, you got them all. It was Tor. And, uh, yeah, so that's like the main team, and, you know, they all become friends and stuff like that, and good team dynamic. And, yeah. Uh, I, I just agree with everything you're saying. I think the next, like, book we should probably discuss is Archer and Armstrong. Oh, you don't want to talk about it? We're not segueing into that. What? Okay, so I think we should just keep going with Harbinger. Um, I kind of wandered off a little bit because I'm excited to talk about all the other books, but right. um, let's keep going about Harbinger. Um, yeah, there's still some stuff I wanted to cover there. Yeah, there's a, a lot of... Because Sarah didn't get to talk about Livewire and Faith, and why Faith yeah. is such an icon. <laughs> yeah, um, as everybody knows who is into the Valiant world, Faith is very iconic for being the plus-size like woman of you know Valiant. It's um, It was a very big thing when she came out because... Obviously, you really don't see plus size girls being as powerful as she is. They're not portrayed. Yeah, much in comics. Yeah, I mean, like you got um, her in Livewire, uh, Flamingo. They they just there's like a lot of powerful women in here that should be more discussed. But um, I definitely say Livewire and Faith are like my two main women of this group that are like my favorites. Um, but I also love Livewire because she's, you know, again, she turned, she was, um, you know, Harada's little, I guess, what, sidekick? Like a daughter. Like, yeah, like a daughter, daughter to him. Like, she followed him. She did what, you know, he taught her and she trusted him. But when she found out he was going down a bad path, she went down her own path. And, um, what's very cool and unique about her is she can control, like, machinery um, she's very, very powerful. I mean, come on, this whole world's full of, um, uh, machinery and she can just make anything come to life and make anything do what she wants. Um, and Faith, she is more portrayed as like a very hardworking woman and, um, she has the ability to like fly and, you know, she's, um, very smart. Like she can smart ass anything anybody says. She could just make you look so stupid and, um, you know, she's got that very huge influence on a lot of girls that are into comics or a lot of boys that are into comics that feel like, for some reason, um, most comics are just based on, like, a certain size of a woman or a certain perspective of what a woman should look like in a comic book for some reason. But yeah, she, they're, these women are very iconic and I really like them. Yeah. And, and they also have really good stories, too, so. Yeah, and Livewire's gonna be later getting her own series, too. Yes. And hopefully they, they start making, like, a little show about her because they could do so much with her, as long as they don't, like, mess it up, so. Yeah. Yeah, and if you guys aren't aware, there actually is a little, like, TV show kind of fan-made film mm -hmm. called, like, Ninjak versus the Valley Universe. And it was actually good. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, six episodes long, and the episodes were short, but, you know, they they did what they had to in that show. They just made six quick episodes about, like, 
each character kind of and the you know they got the costumes down right and they got the humor and the characterizations of the, you know how people talk right and you know the appearance of the character is perfect and you know if you guys want to get into valiant that way that's also another way to jump in like a good starting point at least, like at first, we were a little bit worried about that. Yeah, it but when we weird. actually watched it, because you know, you could tell it was low budget, but you could tell they like put everything into the characters and put everything into making the show at least decent. So yeah, it was really good. Yeah, and it's and it was made by Bat and Son, the guys who make those live action fights on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they they're great at like making costumes and stuff like that and fights. So that was cool. Um, and Jason David Frank was Bloodshot. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was really he was, cool. He was a Power, Power Ranger. You guys know him from Power Rangers. And he's actually a martial artist in real life, too. So that made the fights more believable, because that was all him doing the stunts. That wasn't, like, a stunt double. So, yeah. It, I think the episodes are still online. You could probably find them somewhere. Someone probably... No, they're still online. I looked. Okay. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, someone probably, like, copied and pasted them on some other site somewhere, because I heard they were taking them down. But yeah, that's another way to get into Valiant. Um, another character I want to discuss too that's very important is Ninjak. Yes. Um, who's probably one of my personal favorites. And a good way to describe Ninjak is he's like Batman meets James Bond. And the reason I say that is because Batman because he's rich mm-hmm. <laughs> and he has all these gadgets and James Bond because he's British <laughs> and he also has a smart ass humor. I never like, looked at it that way. Like That's a James good way to Bond. Look at yeah, it. <laughs> I always I always thought that I'm like Ninjax just like if James Bond and Batman had a baby. And then you know it's kind of like Batman too because of the Roku and Ninjak and then Catwoman and Batman. Yeah, that so. too, yeah. Um yeah, basically what I said earlier too, Ninjak is like, he works for MI6, and MI6 is, uh, their special forces, like, unit division in England, kind of like their version of FBI or CIA. They're actually a real company in real life, MI6, and Ninjak is, he's kind of like, he's like a special agent that's sent in to deal with, like, special matters that other agents can't handle. Because mm-hmm. ninjas are trained differently than standard agents, and yeah, ninja X cool because he's not just like a badass ninja, but you know they give him personality and his backstory is kind of dark and fucked up, like you know the stuff that happened with his parents, and then and no, it's not a Batman ripoff where he saw his parents get shot in front of him. No, that's not what happened. <laughs> You know, and then he became a, you know, hero. You know, that's not what happened. Uh, no, actually, his parents were also agents, you know, in the MI6. And, you know, there's whole conspiracies about that. And, you know, that kind of pointed him to his life in MI6 and stuff. And his, like, his butler, or his, like, the guy that kind of took care of him and helped him grow up, like, kind of, like, abused him a little bit you know, growing up, and, you know, the the thing is, is, like, Valiant, in a way, like, kind of covers all, like, messed up topics in the world. Ninja kind of covered, like, people that are getting abused, in a way. Um, Harbinger and, like, the character Tori Harada cover, like, politics in the world and why politics are messed up and, and kind of racism, too, in a way. Um, There's, like, a lot of subliminal messages in Valiant that I appreciate. Um, Faith represents people that are plus size or obese that are struggling with weight loss. Um, Bloodshot, he represents, like, soldiers that suffer through PTSD and memory, you know, issues and being far away from home and not being around your family. Um... And, yeah, it's just, I can go on and on about the comparisons of characters in this universe into real-world problems that people struggle with, and, you know, why it's so, like, relatable, and why I appreciate this universe so much, is because it's just more of a realistic universe. Yeah. 
and it's just kind of like a it's, it's just a good way to it's like a breath of fresh air from Marvel and DC because we're we gotten so much of that mm-hmm. and you know seeing Valiant step in they've been around since the 90s but since they rebooted themselves I've paid much more attention to them they've read all their books and I saw those connections with real world problems into you know into their fictional stories so why do you like Valiant? What's your reason for liking Valiant? And what do you appreciate about them? And I you... have a similar reason to why I'm in love with them. Um, I guess, yeah, they, they bring a lot of like real issues that we all as people deal with into comics. And then, you know, they have such a powerful meaning to their storylines and they have such amazing artwork that's so sharp and well done and, it, you know, especially um, Rai, um, such an yeah, amazing artwork, and I, I just I love I love that about you know this universe um, this universe because it's it's not just about you know um, what you see or read like it's not just about like oh okay this person's um, you know a badass ninja this person's a you know whatever he's a human being yeah problems, yeah. yeah they actually have problems they actually have like difficulties being who they are and difficulties moving on because of things that are holding them back. And I think that's something people need and some, you know, something they can just step into like a fresh, fresh breathing, like in fresh air, you something know, like relatable. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, it's just something it's, it's different. It's hard to relate to characters. Like people say like, Oh, I can't relate to Superman cause he's overpowered and stuff. Like yeah. That. Like Marvel and DC, it's amazing. Obviously like they have so much good storylines and so much good artwork, but Valiant, Image, everything else that's, you know, different universes, they, especially, you know, Valiant, um, is, they just bring a different taste in your mouth. They give you a different look on things. So that's why I love them so much. And I really think that you guys should, you know, take the time out to go check them out because, you know, it's not just about, you know, what the name of the character is. It's way deeper than that. And even when me and him have gone to, like, um conventions and they had valiant booths like these people are so nice like yeah we met the some of the writers yeah we they're super nice the artists, yeah. super down to earth and you know you can tell they really they love the characters yeah, yeah they love the characters and they they love this world they like to put, put all their passion stuff in into it. it yeah so just you guys should totally check it out um me and shaggy double n were, were super super serious about how amazing they are so that's why i like them i agree um, yeah, and it's just, um, another, like, huge, huge reason I want to recommend this universe to you is the continuity. The continuity is so consistent, and it's so, it's a, it's a nice pace, and it's just so convenient and so smooth. Um, there's rarely any, like, plot holes or any, like, you know, like, mistakes that they've made very rarely um and what i mean about continuity is that when they started in 2012 rebooted themselves the stories that they started with were like their big characters like you know exo bloodshot and harbinger and stuff like that and they started out small they were establishing their universe and getting people a taste of what's happening and then they would grow slowly Mm-hmm. And plant little references into their books and say, hey, there's a bigger world out there. There's bigger, more stuff going on in, in that universe. Axel Manowar started out and then it, you know, introduced Ninjak. And when Ninjak got introduced for the first time, that opened up the universe more. Because we realized, like, oh, there's another character here out there somewhere. Yeah. And then he got his own series, you know what I mean? And so on and so forth. You know, much like what Marvel does with their movies. Alright, we're back. Sorry for the interruption. Alright, like I was saying, the continuity is one of the things I appreciate the most. Um, And like I said, they started in 2012 and continued their continuity in 2018. And what I like most about it is is that if something happens 
you know, if there's an event that happens or a, a crossover or a death of a character, it's pretty much permanent. It won't get rebooted and it won't get restarted. And they've kept that consistency throughout all these years and they haven't rebooted or brought a character back to life for some bullshit reason. Marvel and DC do that all the time. Someone gets killed off, they're going to come back in a year or two. Like Wolverine or something. Wolverine got killed, he's coming back again. Spider-Man got killed, he came back. You know, like Professor X got killed, he came back. You know, Superman got killed, he came back. You know, Valiant, like, no one's really come back yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe Master Dark came back a couple of times, but he didn't technically die. And that's Shadow Man's, like, main villain. Um, but yeah, the continuity is, like, one of the big things that I love, because you, you can read something, you can read a series, and then if you read another series, like, you won't get confused at all, because you won't think, like, oh, I gotta read this part and this part, you know what I mean? You just gotta read it in order, up to date with where it's at now, and you'll be good to go, so, yeah. It's a good way of saying all that. For everybody to understand um but yeah it's it's true like they don't they don't just kill someone off and come bring them back out of nowhere they keep you know them in the ground and uh obviously let them let people know like what they were um known for but they don't just bring them back for any kind of reason and i like that too yeah so like a, an event or a crossover will happen and that will affect every character, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. like, you know, there was the Harbinger Wars, you know, that that was a big event for Bloodshot, and the Harbinger team. Um, Armor Hunters was another big one. That was a, more of, like, an Exo Man of War crossover where, you know, the, the Armor Hunters came down and were trying to kill, you know, Arik and take his armor. And, you know, that that affected the whole, like, you know, Valley Universe, too, because they had to find out how to kill these armor hunters or get rid of them, you know what I mean? So, you know, they cross over when they need to, like, it won't just be random, like, you know, you're reading an Exo Man of War book or an Injack book, and then out of nowhere, Bloodshot comes out of nowhere, you know what I mean? Like, if a character appears in another character's series, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's not just random, like, oh, there's that character popping up for no reason, you know what I mean, just for a, for him or her to pop up. Like, it's got to make sense. You know, a good example would be, like, in the Shadow Man universe, a character called Dr. Mirage pops up. That makes sense because she's a magic-based character, and she deals with paranormal events, and Shadow Man is a very paranormal-centric character. You know, but she didn't just appear in his book. You know what I mean? Like, she appeared when they needed her the most. You know what I mean? To deal with, like, a paranormal threat, so. And, you know, if none of those, like, characters appeal to you, you can always look to another part of the universe and see something that does appeal to you. Bloodshot covers, like, the action and violence category. Ninja covers that as well, but also adds, like, you know, the secret agent genre, you know, stealth and being sneaky, mm -hmm. if you like that kind of stuff more. Um, Exo Manowar, that covers, like, the sci-fi side of Valiant. If you want something more sci-fi and alien-ish, you can go for that. Um, Harbinger, that all, you know, that covers, like, you know, also sci-fi and, you know, like, superpowers and more superhero stuff, if you want that. Um, Shadow Man covers, like, the magic side of stuff, so if you want, like, fantasy, magic, more of that, then that's, like, their magic side of stuff. Um, also Dr. Mirage. And Punk Mambo. Yeah, Punk Mambo, too, who's, like, a priestess that helps out, um, Shadow Man every now and then. Um, Rai covers, like, the future, the Valiant, Valiant's future side of stuff. Um, and that's one of your favorites, right, Rye? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you like Rye? The, the artwork is super sharp. The storyline is very, uh, 
I had to, okay, at first I had to read that, like, at least, I think it was, like, I, I read this two or three times. Yeah, it was, it, it was kind of confusing to me, but, um, I think that... If, yeah, this is set in the year, like, 4001 yeah. or something. It, it's, like, very, uh... In Japan. You gotta read Rai more slowly. You gotta very, um, a very, you gotta very, you have to, um, be very imaginative with the pictures and really get into it. Like, you can't just read it fast, look over the pictures and be like, okay, this is what's happening. Because you're going to get lost. Um, but Rai has such a beautiful artwork and such, like, um, how do I say? Like, Rai has its own... It looks like an oil painting. Yeah. Kinda like, it's, like, painted, like, the, uh, the artist, I think, is called, like, uh, Clayton Crane? Clayton Crane? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. He, and, yeah, he, he's done art for a lot of companies, like Marvel and, you know, Valley and stuff. But, uh, yeah, his art is very distinctive, and it's very detailed, and his art fits the futuristic setting, you know? And he also, I think, yeah, I think he did Carnage, too. He did a series of Carnage, um, for Marvel. But, um, yeah, like, his, his art fits perfectly with, like, the future and what's going on in that story. Um, it takes place in Japan, and, uh... Yeah, it's like about, you know, it's about a character named Rai, who is like the protector of New Japan, because it's called New Japan. And then there's like a figure called Father, yep. who is the creator of like New Japan and like kind of like life. It's kind of like their god in a way that they worship, you know, but then he realized like that Rai, Rai starts to question like who he is, what's his purpose for, why he was created and, you know, the whole classic tale of like the the creation questioning its creator yep. you know what i mean so like why am i here what is my purpose why did you create me like who are you you know and then it gets more in depth with that too so i like that and you love rise one of your favorite like series it's just I, I think it's it's the it's not just the character itself i mean obviously it kind of is for me because i love the artwork i love how they you know uh drew him i love everything about his character and his personality because at first when you're reading it you can tell like you know like um shaggy double n said he's questioning the creator um and he doesn't know what's he, he starts to like notice something's off he starts to notice like the, this you know new japan is like something's like wrong so he starts to go more into like questioning it and people start coming after him and he you he meet a lot of different characters along the way, and I love the characters. I'm not going to do spoil alerts, um, because this book is very, um, it's a book you need to really take your time with. It's a book you really need to like look at this amazing artwork and yeah, and you know imagine yourself being in this world because this is like a book I would love them to like love them see. I can't talk. This is a book I would like to see um, turn into either a TV show or a movie. But it would need yeah. a lot of, um... A lot of special effects. Yes, a lot of it. That would be expensive. Yeah. Um, maybe one day. Um, yeah, so, uh... Yeah, those are, like, our favorite characters. There's... I know there's a couple characters we haven't, like, covered. Uh, we're obviously not gonna be able to cover all of them mm -hmm. in, at once. Uh, we could probably maybe potentially do a second part to this discussion. Um... But yeah, like we're gonna do like a quick like conclusion for like the next like five minutes. So like a quick rundown. We give you the quick rundown of like our favorite characters, what's likable about them. The main ones, at least, but you know, there's other smaller ones out there, like, you know, the ones we didn't even talk about, like Eternal Warrior is out there too, and you know, why he's great too and stuff like that. But um yeah, so in, like, conclusion, yeah, the main reason to read Valiant and to get into him is the continuity is, like, great. Uh, a lot of characters are relatable. Um, it's set in a modern-day setting most of the time. That's where it takes place, and, you know, it's set in all different time periods, so if you don't like one time period, you can always read another book and go to a different time period. Um, there's a bunch of diversity. Like, it's not just all white guys, you know, yeah. <laughs> like stereotypical white guys fighting everything and solving all the problems. Like, you know, there's 
tons of women represented, all different races as well. You know, like, uh, everybody's represented, no one's, like, not included. Um, every story is different, like, really, really, there's no, no character is similar, each character is, like, different, you know what I mean? Like, you might find a couple similarities, but, like, they all have, like, their differences, even when they're talking to each other or crossing over with each other, they always have, like, their arguments or their agreements about stuff, you know what I mean? And some of them have respect for each other. So, um, it's a very rich universe, very unappreciated, and yeah, I think you should really, like, I implore you to read it. It's just really worth your time, you will not regret it, you will not waste your time reading it. I agree, I think the, um, again, I think the artwork is amazing. And your favorite I, things about Valiant. Um, I think that the characters are, you know, well-written and well- um, put out there. I think what he said about the diversity is very true. It's not just based on, you know, um, species or, or like just, you know, a gender. It's, it's based on like any kind of life form and, you know, different sets of ways. But, um, I just, I love every storyline they've put out there. I, I think that every book they have done has been done very well. I have not disagreed with any of their books or disliked them which is very weird and rare um, because obviously there's going to be characters people don't like. There's going to be storylines people don't agree with. And I think that Valiant is very, um, like they have their own individual personality to a universe. Yeah, They really put themselves out there, not just as different, but as, um, you know, their own own thing and i really like that so yeah they're their own brand yeah so i love everything that shaggy double n said i agree with everything he's saying i can see he's nodding his head and agrees with everything i'm saying yeah you guys Um, can't see me nodding my head yeah but (laughs) it's it's just an amazing you know universe to get into so yeah and they're not like a copy and paste of marvel or dc like they, they are their own thing they all have their own original characters like yeah you might see a couple similarities between you know some character certain characters with others but for the most part, like, you know, they, they've been around, they're not brand new universe. Like they've been around since the nineties and they just rebooted themselves. You know what I mean? And I am telling you to check out the rebooted part, you know, I mean, you can go back to the nineties version too, if you want, but you know, if you want more, more modern and updated, then go for that. Um, they're always publishing books. You know, there's always something new coming out. Uh, another cool thing that's nice is they don't always like, keep a series going and going, you know, they, you know, make it short, simple, and that's the end of the story. You know, it doesn't keep going for 50 issues besides Exo Manowar. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had 50 issues, but yeah. Other characters get like a short story and that's it. And maybe they'll pop up later somewhere, but yeah. So yeah, that's, um, really basically it. And yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. Anything else you want to say to conclude? that you guys should all check out the Valiant Universe and uh, take your time out to let us know what you think. Yep. Check them out when you can. Um, Yeah, this is, uh, so, yeah, that'll be the end of it. This is episode three of uh, the Parallel World Podcast with your host Shaggy Double N signing out with Anna Megas Queen. See you guys later. Thank you for watching.